welcome back to face vladimir thank you very much dave how are Great you to i'm good buddy uh considering what's happening in the world you know uh the show must go on right oh yeah i love this song and i love this uh <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's uh Totally, totally agree with you. Thank you very much, though, for uh, having me here. And uh, okay. I hope everybody is well and safe. And uh, my best Appreci wishes to everyone. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, it kind of puts things in perspective. There aren't uh, too many things more important than prospering, but uh, definitely this puts money in perspective. So have you ever been in Zoom before, Vlad? Once. <laughs> okay, so there's a there's a little green box. Uh, you, it's a drop down menu for you that says the, share. The share screen, right? Yeah. Yep. So uh, we could uh, see what you're I, what you're it, up to, is, buddy. Is okay. It, is it okay now? Yeah, we have the Aussie Kiwi up there. I remember you talking about that. I was going quite to some say some time ago. Uh -huh. Somehow. Somehow, when we speak, the Aussie Kiwi become interesting. <laughs> Isn't that something? So, uh, yeah, so you're looking at weekly here and, uh, uh, uh yep. I'll, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll try to give my view here. Okay. Starting maybe with some background. We saw the, and then the technical, if, if, if it's okay. okay. Sure. Uh, so we saw the Aussies, uh, suffer, uh, big time, uh, on the last uh, months, uh, yes. where they, against almost all the pairs they created completely. Uh, uh, significant moves and, um, and some of them are very very important lows. All that was started uh, with all this great cr crisis and the craziness uh, from China affecting directly on uh, Australia economy. Uh, and the, as soon as uh, uh, China shows at least <laughs> to, to all of us, their uh, slowdown in the pandemic and uh, the control they uh, managed to achieve. Uh, the investors, it seems like the investors believe that and rely on this, uh, uh, on that steps. Um, and the first one to enjoy from uh, such impact is, is Australia. They, they were the one to suffer from uh, all the all, all the crash happening in China. And now as things begin to look possibly better uh, australians are the, the ones to the ones to uh, enjoy from that move and that's what brings me to recently on the last uh, couple of weeks specifically in the last week uh focusing more on uh, australians and the pacifics in general versus uh, all the other uh instruments if it's the dollar if it's the canadian uh, if it's the Kiwi, which uh, <laughs> one is one of the pairs I, I see here. Right. Uh, so uh, should I should I expand my techniques here? Or? Yeah, so uh, uh, basically it suffered because of uh, the shutdown in China. Aussie will benefit. Why long Aussie Kiwi? Because uh, New Zealand won't benefit as much because they're not as much of a commodity currency because it's more about milk. Then about that's metals, a, that's my assumption. Correct. That's my assumption. They are much okay. less uh, uh, um, Miners. related to all the commodities uh, the, the way that Australian is. The New Zealand is with their own things, right? The milk right. mainly. Um, so the way I see that fundamentally and technically currently synchronized, and for me it's a very good sign. Uh, technically speaking, uh, observing the... Uh, very high time frame. This is the monthly chart. We right. reached a very significant low uh, at the end of this uh, big trend, the uh, cycle move, followed up by what I, as you know, admire the divergences, uh, especially yeah. shown on the uh, MACD indicator. Um, okay. We also are facing a very, very serious round number next to the one level, parity level. Right. Uh, not something that we are evident of evidence of every single day. It's yeah, let me. Can I ask you just one question? And I can't tell from this chart because it's so macro. But the low that we had a month ago, mm -hmm. that low. Okay, it actually took out the low from 2014 by a Correct. few pips, right? Correct. Correct. So I mean, also, I mean, possible stop hunt. I mean, everyone had their stops there, right? 
Correct. Took them uh, out uh, and then turn. Classic. Nice look. Good eye. Very, exactly. And that's all, right. all, all the things somehow come all together to one place. Uh, if it's the fundamental, if it's what's happening currently with the economical view, the sentiment, the technical parts which fa make us face here with beautiful false breakout. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Second clearance of the same zone. We, we started here uh, right. in 2018. Now again, all that happens on its uh, parity level. Again, too good to be true in some way, but it, it is yet true. Uh, watching on the weekly time frame, the way I see that this very current leg ending with this triple cycle, also facing a bullish divergence on the moving average of the MACD. Okay. Uh, and going uh, to lower time frame to try and to find how it is structuring the bullish view, we got a beautiful trendline breakout of the most recent one on a daily time frame. Nice. And we are developing here currently the second leg. Ideally, we would want to see that breaking through this high, uh, uh, establishing some uh, bullish uh, power, uh, and after some retraces, I do expect this uh, is just the beginning of something uh, uh, much, much more serious to the upside. Okay. And going even lower, each of these daily legs uh, starts to make its own trending uh, structures. This was the first leg with ABCD correction. And this is the second leg developing, which again, likely to assume that next to these highs, ideally after clearing these highs, will create some sort of uh, retraces. Uh, and I do believe that uh, this is just the beginning of something bigger, unless there will be some- uh, uh, Another spike in the uh, infections yes. in China. Exactly. Yeah. Unless there Another will be wave. Yes, which of course could, um, you know, uh, abort the whole deal exactly uh, so we need we need to remember that technical are only uh, basically w one thing of the whole picture we are looking at uh, as the, the market doesn't really care of the lines we draw so we need to stick to the to the facts how it's going to be developed assuming it will be the way i expect uh, and like the previous leg which ended with a beautiful abcd correction and the divergence continuation that's a good sign for uh, possible uh, bullish move to continue. So I definitely have my eyes uh, on uh, this one. Uh, I missed the first uh, leg uh, of the rally, but I definitely may, uh, made it on the second leg after okay. the CD was uh, <coughs> broken. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's how I see that. Uh, for those of Kiwi, I, I definitely think it's uh, one of the most interesting ones. For those of you who are looking, uh, for those of vendors who are looking like for a bit more quiet pairs because it's compared to others it's still quiet um and all this dramatical move at the end of the day it's just 500 points so nothing like uh, that will uh, make us sleep worse right okay you know you know there's something interesting about what you do and you know you you have to have deep pockets to do it this way and well really you don't but if you want to make uh returns it helps to have a big war chest but um you don't use any leverage do you no 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 i i, I hate this word okay so you just all of your position trades are just you know you have it fully funded in cash right correct okay so uh, you know that's interesting a lot of people so would you say that at the minimum um uh and you are also a mentor and a teacher uh, what do you advise, you know, everyone wants to, you know, only put up 10% or have maximum leverage. Uh, uh, what do you advise your, the people that you're teaching? Uh, do you say it's okay for them to say be at 50% margin? Personally, I, I think this is a fantastic question here because it's one of these subjects which is, uh, <laughs> we, we, we prevent to, to talk about, but it's very important. Um, the, personally, I, I hate leverage. I don't believe in that. And, uh, for me, it's a, it's like an enemy <laughs> for successful okay. trading, All but right. it doesn't mean it's not usable. Uh, the, there are a lot of great traders using that properly. The, the way I see that and the way I always suggest that the way of action is as long as you can 
control your risk and you would not fear of a loss, that's a reasonable leverage. Uh, but the moment you start uh, to be to, to to lose your comfort, to lose your uh, convenience, uh, to lose sleep, in, in some cases, you know, it happens to traders. That means you are overexposed. Overexposure normally uh, makes traders do mistakes. If it's forcing technical setups, if it's uh, taking position they didn't plan to, just to cover some of the exposure and like to try to to hedge partially here and there to improve their conditions. No, normally such things do not end up well. Uh, so okay. the way I see that is as long as a trader feel com feels comfortable with uh, the maximum risk that could happen out of a trade or series of trades he, he takes, this is a reasonable leverage for him. But at the moment this starts to be not comfortable uh, by holding the positions, it's, it's a bad place to be. Personally, I have uh, this kind of personality that uh, unless I have very strict uh, rules with myself, I tend to gamble. So in order not to find myself doing that, I yes. developed this sort of rules for myself. Uh, and I, I, I never go leverage. No. Yeah, know thyself because you've done it. So uh, really let me bad. ask you this. When you're 100%, uh, no, mar no leverage, no margin, uh, do you use market stops or is it kind of a money stop as far as a percentage you're willing to risk on any idea? Uh, well, you, you mean the protections? Yeah. I mean, uh, is it based upon technicals, your stop, yes. or is it based upon how much you're willing to risk? No, I don't, dollar -wise? I don't love the, the order stop loss as it is by definition, just put a hard stop loss, whatever it is. It's very good uh, tool for day traders or short term traders for those who like go, especially leverage right, with yes. a certain risk. But I love, I love the control over the position. So for me, it's mainly uh, what validates my uh, setup and what invalidates my setup. Okay. I have clear, clear scenario at, uh, of levels and the technical way it uh, develops what would be my validation for the view and what would invalidate it. If I reach an invalidation, I cut the position. Um, okay. Regardless the profit, loss, break even, I don't care at this point. Again, I have a full control of uh, the risk here and that's why I just rely on the chart and not specific. Uh, do, you, do you have any kind of discipline, Vlad, for uh, booking profits? Do you, uh, is there, uh, are you a believer in taking partials? Yes. Oh, okay. So, uh, what do you use to decide or is it completely, you know, discretionary what you use for deciding, uh, when to take something off the table? Uh, the same, the same techniques I have uh, for, uh, my entries, the same techniques I have for exits, uh, as basically okay. based on cycles and the divergences, as long okay. as, and the trend develops and there are no signs against, meaning no divergences against, no reversal signs, I'm right. right. Uh, okay. Like for the case of the Aussie Kiwi, for example, my assumption is that this is how it's going to be developed. As long as it follows up, and that means we are currently trading the, developing the second leg. Right. And as I saw before, it's broken into mini waves there. So let's say as long as we are holding above the 61.8 of this level, I am bullish. If suddenly whatever happens, we get one straight leg going below all the Fibonacci's, it invalidates my view. So it doesn't matter what my lines show. That's what the market gives. That's what I take. I cut my position regardless of the result. Uh, so I, I, I tend to go with the straight facts the market gives on, on the chart, right? Um, yeah. I definitely believe that the okay. chart represents what's going on behind the scenes and the expectations of the investors and the traders of the coming um, coming events, coming uh, news. Uh, okay. So I just stick to that. And yes, the okay. discipline is something you develop with with time. It's uh, I I don't have magical tools how to become disciplined. It's impossible. All right, someone's commenting on the price quote on crude at 27.80. That's because it's price in Canadians, not U.S. dollars, right? 
uh, sorry, not, not, not sure I understand. Can you please? Oh, well, you know, right now I'm showing uh, 2146 on WTI. You're showing 2782 because it's priced in Canadian dollars, not U.S. dollars. Is that correct? Um, it, it's uh, in the U.S., but uh, I'm, uh, it's a uh, spot oil on the CFDs. Okay, not, right. Not, not, not contracts and not brand. Uh, okay, but is it priced in Canadian or U.S.? Uh, U U.S. Oh, okay. Kind of yes. unusual. You have 27 and I have 2144. Um, okay. And let's look at, uh, uh, oh, you want to go to oil. Great. Okay. Let's take a look. Uh, well, I didn't, but <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. I, yeah. I don't mind. If, 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 okay. if, the, if clients asking for that, I don't mind. I, I'll okay. share my view. Okay, what is your view in oil? Uh, you know, uh, that was a double whammy with the price war between Russia and Saudi Arabia, and their, you know, the that historic agreement did nothing to stabilize prices. Um, uh, I'm thinking that if you think China is stabilizing, that perhaps the price of energy could stabilize in here and maybe even recover. Well, I guess this discussion could go for uh, hours. Twenty hours, yeah. Good, uh, good uh, conversation over a beer or something in some pub. But, but uh, on a bigger picture, uh, the way I see, and of course, I might be completely wrong here. Just personal view. I think this is a very well planned move. Um, fundamentally, not going into details and what brings me to think so, but what makes me to think so, but. I believe Russia is preparing the ground uh, for a long time enough now uh, to hold the economy on stable level uh, around price of, uh, of oil being around 20. Um, and okay. I believe that all the, the current thing happening with the pandemic is a very good card in their hands, uh, putting the pressure on the U.S., uh, and of course, the oil industry in the U.S. Uh, it's a big rival to to Russia, a uh, big rival to the Saudis, and um, I think it's definitely that the wheel is definitely on uh, their hands right now okay. to move. The, the The bottom line remains the same: no flights around the globe, the way we know it. Um, no imports, no exports on the level we know it. Most of the people are, are are yet locked down, so it doesn't matter what kind of rumors we we, we are exposed to on a daily basis. There There's no, no demand. Sorry. There's no demand. Exactly. At the end of the day, there is no real demand, and it doesn't change yet. As yeah. long as this is the case, my view remains bearish. Um, okay. And I would not be surprised if, also technically, we have all the reasons to see one one more low here okay will that happen or not of course not my not my lines and not any any other analysts or trader uh, lines uh, would change it but personally and technically speaking there are all the reasons for a new low to happen okay. fundamentally as well because right. if it is a real uh, uh, sort of price war happening be between the Saudi russia and the u.s uh, so, as I said, I believe the wheel is in their hands. Then there is no demand currently. It's a great, 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 great way to play some political uh, uh, chess here. And that's what they do. For me, it's sell the rallies and, and, and okay. in that structure. Yes. Okay. And uh, what's life like for you in Canada with the virus? Are you on lockdown where you can't... Uh... You're supposed to stay home and only leave for essential services, etc. Is it yes, like that for you? The official, uh, it's not uh, maybe as bad as other places around the globe. Um, yeah, like Israel, you can't leave your house, right? Correct. In yeah, Israel, so uh, under a real lockdown, especially now in this period of Passover. Oh, right, um, right. Okay. So um, here it's not like that. Uh, here, uh, you people still go out. The, the official recommendation is stay home. Most people respect it, uh, and that's good to see. Again, okay, it's not let, as bad as other places. All right, and let me ask you this. Uh, markets are one thing, and we've had this recovery in the S&Ps and other global markets, mm -hmm. and uh, markets and the economy can be two different things. Um, 
what's your view after this has happened? Uh, kind of a buddy, uh, uh, kind of a big body blow to the economy. And a lot of people think you could just turn the switch back on. Uh, what do you think are the implications for financial markets and the economy after this type of shock? Well, I don't believe that uh, such a um, shock we've all been experiencing could, could just disappear. Um, right. I think we all will feel the impacts for pretty long time. It already started. People lose jobs. People, yeah. Um, yeah. Companies uh, are going to bankrupt. I'm not sure how to, uh, how to eat with the, the steps of, uh, of the Fed recently throwing so much money into debt, um, just try to save whatever is possible to, to, to be saved, especially companies under the risk. Historically, such things didn't end well. How this will end, I'm probably not the right person to ask. Okay. Technically speaking and logically speaking, I don't think such dramatic, massive event like we've all been uh, evidence to could end up... Uh, so quick, the impacts are some, something, something we're going to feel for a long time. Uh, so what we see currently is just printing money. And uh, it seems working currently on, uh, on the investors. But um, the really important thing would be here, what will happen uh, on the coming one, two months, assuming they will uh, take the lockdown down because the Fed will, will not be able to continue and purchasing without, you know, uh, certain uh, limits. Um, what will happen there? Will the companies be able to continue their uh, activity, their their uh, no. uh, their work without the Fed or not? As I said, technically, I think this is the beginning of some deeper correction. Yeah. Um, okay. That's how I see that. I respect so, it. I, I, you know, and. Uh, a lot of things that were happening before this uh, will, you know, are politically incorrect now, like buybacks, using uh, tax cuts and debt to buy back their stock and then has to be rescued after it. So the financial engineering game is going to have to change a little bit, don't you think? Or it's over. Yes, yes. And I think it's time and I think it's, uh, it's, it's it's a beginning of something much more significant than just a pandemic, uh, and that's all. I think the financial, as we know it, will change. To what, to which side? I don't know. Maybe it's going to be much much better than we all expect. Or yeah, let, let's hope. Let's hope. Definitely. Okay, you know what I say, Vlad. Hope is the oxygen in our <laughs> life and Very the true. carbon monoxide in our trading. <laughs> so I really appreciate you being here. Uh, best way for people to follow you, Vlad. Um, well, for, once again, first of all, th and thank you to having me here. Um, I love your thing, you by the way. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm available on my blog, uh, okay. which is vladimirabakov.com, as, as the name suggests. Okay. And uh, to those who want to enjoy the live trading rooms on a daily basis that we hold and our live trading chat, I'm available yeah. in Traders Academy Club, myself and my team. And, uh, okay, I like your briefcase. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, my I, I gained warrior. some weight here. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how a, I used to be. <laughs> well, I tell you what, buddy. Uh, really appreciate you being here and talking Aussie Kiwi and your style and methods. And may your loved ones remain untouched. And you as well. Uh, pips rain down on you, bro. Thank okay? you very much, and uh, stay safe. Uh, good health to you and yours, and uh, to uh, all the listeners. Uh, thank you for your time. Have a great day. All right, everyone. That's Vladimir Ribikov. And if you're a Twitter person, you could follow him at his name, at Vladimir Ribikov. And there's his website, Traders Academy Club. So that's Turnaround Tuesday, everybody. Crude's trying to turn. I'm taking a shot at gold and EG's acting okay. Everyone have a great day. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And we'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios.